Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're doing well out there. In today's episode, we're gonna go through the process of how I set my goals for the year ahead. I've sat down over the last few weeks and I've come up with five goals that I've got in place for what will be, hopefully, a very big 2021 year. I'm also gonna show you the process of how I actually stick to my goals throughout the year. It's great come this time of year to set these New Year's resolutions, but how do you actually stay on top of the goals you've set and then ultimately go to achieve them as well? So I'm gonna go through all of that today. I'll show you a few examples of the goals that I've got in place for this business that I'm in of full-time reselling. So I hope you get some value out of it. I hope it motivates you to sit down and write some goals. Let's get into it. Now, I've had a lot of fun creating these goals over the last couple of weeks, but before we dive into what those goals are, I did just wanna go through the process of how I actually create the goals. And I do keep it pretty simple when I do so. There's only two things that I really keep a focus on. The first one is keeping it simple. I really only do three to five annual goals every single year. I don't like to go past a year. I always keep it within 12 months because I think it's more attainable and there's more of a focus right there in front of you when you've got it on a 12 month basis. So it's always three to five, it's annual. And from there, I'll create smaller goals underneath each of those major goals. So in effect, if you've got five annual goals, there might be 25 mini goals that make up that umbrella that you've set for yourself. So I always keep it simple, three to five main goals, and then I use the SMART method. Now, a few of you may have heard about the SMART method when it comes to goal setting. It's pretty widely used and, and common practice. But ever since I picked up this method, I've really started to use it every single time, and I've found it to be really effective. It's a very simple process, again, with this one. You really just wanna make sure it's specific, your goals are measurable, they're achievable, they're relevant, and they are time-bound. So there's a few little guiding principles there when you're trying to construct the sentence that is your goal. And I think if you can try to stick to those sort of five key pillars, you're gonna create a pretty worthwhile goal that you're gonna to wanna to attack into the new year. So I've used the simple process, I've created five goals, I've used the SMART method, um, let's get into it. I'll give you my first goal of 2021. And I should put this into context first. I have been a full-time reseller now for four months. And what that has done is it's really allowed me to, I guess, have a really good blueprint of how I'm going at the moment. And I can kind of project towards what might be an achievable number for next year. If you're starting out as a reseller from, from the very beginning, I'd really encourage you to put just small goals in place, just little achievements along the way. But if you've been in it for a while, if you are a full-time reseller yourself, I really do highly encourage you actually look back at your previous numbers and then work towards a projection of what it might be in the future. It's exactly what I've done here with my first goal. And my first goal is I want to achieve $100,000 in gross annual sales in 2021. Now, the stepping stones for me to be able to achieve $100,000 is that I need to do $8,330 in gross monthly sales. I need to source 335 items and I need to list 335 items. That will need to achieve 180 sales every single month. And the way that that's worked out is it's over a $46 average sale price and a 72% profit margin. Now, first of all, the profit margin and the average sale price is pretty much exactly where it is now. Over the last four months, I've averaged 72% and I have achieved a $46 average sale price. So I was using those metrics to guide myself towards the numbers that you see there for next year if I'm gonna hit $100,000. But I've really, as I mentioned before, I've looked back on the four months worth of numbers to guide how I will achieve 100,000. And I'll pull this map up for you to have a bit of a look at here. It's a comparison of what I've done this year to what I hope to do next year to give you an example of how that looks. And if you see there on the left-hand side, I've basically averaged $66,000 a year as a sales gross. So I've only done it for four months as a full-time reseller, but if I did that, for an entire year, it would work out to 66,000. And I'm averaging five and a half, I'm doing 250 sourced items, I'm listing 250 items, and I'm averaging about 133 sales. So in effect, I'm 66% of the way there to $100,000 in gross annual sales. So that works out to 35% growth. And that's what I hope to achieve next year. Overall, I hope there's a 35% growth on what there was last year or, or 2020. So what that would mean is 35% of all of those numbers on the left works me out to everything that you see there on the right. And that is $100,000 achieved. 
um, holding the 72% profit margin and the $46 average sale price. So that's, I guess, how I went about the process of here I want to have, a, it's, it's easy to say I want to have $100,000 in gross sales, but how do you actually achieve it? And what are the little steps along the way to make sure you get to that 100,000? That's exactly what I've done here by breaking it out into these step-by-step -step bits. My second goal is that I will secure a low cost storage unit by June 30, 2021. I've had a bit of a look into things and the way that I'm going with my sourcing and if I'm gonna be doing 330 items worth of sourcing every single month, my average sell through rate at the moment is about 52%. So in effect, everything that I buy, I sell half of it in, a, in the space of time of my sales cycle on a monthly basis. So with the way that works, I'm projecting to have potentially two and a half thousand items come December next year that I've got in stock. So two and a half thousand items around my house, it, it won't hold up. I'm gonna need to get a storage unit. It needs to be a goal for 2021. The stepping stones are that I need to research and secure the most uh, cost effective because I am only just starting out. There will come a point around June 30 where I've got probably about 1500 items by that point. And I think at that stage, I'll try to open up the, the low cost storage unit and put that into practice. Um, I'm gonna ensure that what I do commit to will be able to house up to 5,000 items to allow for growth. So I'm not having to hop around to the next uh, storage unit. I can keep the one that I initially get and I can grow into it as well. And I also wanna to locate to something that's close to home. Even if I'm out of home or even if I'm still here with my parents, I just want it to be centrally located because I generally feel like I'll be accessing it every single day. So it needs to be low cost, house 5,000 items, and it needs to be close to home. But by June 30, 2021, I do want to have myself secured a storage unit. My third reselling goal for 2021 is that I will build supplier relationships and will commit to a wholesale agreement in Q1 2021. I have been speaking about wholesale, speaking about the thought of drop shipping, using Alibaba, using Amazon FBA, all these great things that I really don't yet know too much about. I've done some initial research. I think it's a great space to get into. I really wanna get into it. And 2021 will be the year that I do it. I really wanna network away and build relationships with suppliers that can issue me wholesale stock that I can go on to sell on eBay. But I also wanna look at other avenues as well. I want to network with online suppliers using e-commerce platforms like Alibaba. I want to learn more about drop shipping and the business model that that obviously presents itself with. And I want to research Amazon FBA as well. These are all areas that I'm personally not currently utilizing, but I think as a full-time reseller, it would be a great idea to get into some of these areas. There's a lot of research that is going to go into that first, but I think if I put in the time and the effort and I commit even to a local wholesale deal in Q1 to get the ball rolling, that would be a great way to start things off for what would be a pretty exciting 2021. Um, I'd still want to use eBay. I still want to use Facebook Marketplace and I still need to sell a heap of furniture. It's a large part of my business. But as we grow and evolve, I want to bring in these new platforms like Amazon FBA, which I think is slowly growing pretty well here in Australia and still very much underutilized. Um, and I think Alibaba and the, the drop shipping model between places like that platform and eBay could be a really smart way to go about it and not sort of overstock myself here at home. So uh, goal number three for sure, I think it's great for anyone out there that's sort of, sort of at that intermediate level uh, of full-time reselling. Um, if you're growing slowly, this is a great way to sort of accelerate that and uh, hopefully you'll be seeing a lot of videos from me uh, over the next few months into 2021 on this sort of stuff. Now, a large part of my business and what I do here in full-time reselling is actually also on YouTube. I do three videos every single week here on YouTube, and I am fortunately now at a point where I am monetized on YouTube as well. So I am earning money from Google AdSense with the ads that you see on these videos. And that's, in, that's awesome because it's really helping stem the flow of, uh, of income for me in this reselling business. I absolutely love to create these videos, but in next year, 2021, I'm currently at 12 subscribers and by December 31 next year I do want to hit 10,000 YouTube subscribers 
by the end of the year. I think it's really achievable. I put a lot of time, work, effort, and energy into it. It's a real passion for mine, YouTube, and I think it needs to be. It can be a bit of a slog, and there's a lot of time and effort put into it for not a lot of return. But I think the potential in, in YouTube is certainly there. I think if you stick with it for multiple years, it can be a really beneficial thing for you down the line. And uh, I do want to stick to it. I want to continue to connect with you guys. Um, I really want to use as stepping stone goals. I want to use um, the d uh, direct message on Instagram uh, every single day. It's got me to where I am now. I swear by it as a growth principle to literally just DM and connect with as many people in your space as you possibly can. Uh, so I'll be doing that on reselling accounts uh, every single day for, for the entirety of next year. Uh, I'll also be scheduling in 10 collaborations uh, during the year as well. I think collaborating with other YouTubers using their base of, uh, of, of subscribership um, to hop across to yours is a great way to grow as well. So I'm gonna be placing a large focus into collaborating with other great resellers out there next year. I'm also gonna upgrade my camera equipment equipment and accessories as well. I'm gonna try and improve the lighting uh, around here. I've obviously just got the microphone recently. Uh, I'm gonna improve the camera uh, that I use as well for my recordings. So there's gonna be a lot that I put in. There'll be a lot of dollars that I put in in 2021 as well into YouTube. I also wanna get a better um, camera software as well um, for editing. So I wanna look at um, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, from a video editing software as well. There's a subscribership there, there's a small fee, but I think it will improve the quality of what you're seeing and uh, that, that at the end of the day is my goal. So there's a lot of stepping stones in there and a lot of a growth plan in place for YouTube next year. Um, you'll be seeing a lot more of me, don't worry about that. There'll be still three videos every single week. Now my next goal, goal number four, is that I will move out of home sooner than we think actually by March 1st, 2021, I'm out of here. It's been awesome. I've been here for a few months. I've been away for five years, so it's been great hanging with mum and dad, but it is time to get out. Uh, I will miss them, but I will be back because I'm gonna be using this house as my office moving forward. So this spare bedroom that I'm currently in, the desk setup that you can see behind me, I use this room on a daily basis. And I really do think that for me to have this sustainable full-time job moving forward, there will come a point where I'm gonna to need to be out of home. I need to get it to the point over the next couple of months financially to be able to survive off just simply reselling and YouTubing. Uh, but I really do think come March 1st, 2021, with two good months ahead, I can be in a position where I can safely move out of home. I'm gonna ensure that I've got a furnished property. I'm gonna be in a share house, so the rent's low. I'm gonna keep the office located, uh, obviously at my parents' house, so I'm not having to pay rent on an office space or even just clutter up the house that I move into and annoy the, the people that I'm living with. Uh, I'm gonna find a house that's close to uh, my parents' house, so the commute isn't too far. I'm not paying too much in petrol. And I'm also gonna try and live off the business income, like I said, I don't wanna dip into my savings. I wanna still invest into the business, but obviously continue to um, obviously use the money that I'm earning to live out of home. So it'd be great come March 1st to be out of home. I'll still use this office though for my YouTube setup. So that's really it guys. They are my five goals for next year. I have kept things pretty simple, but you would have seen under there, there's a few little things that I'm thinking about to hopefully achieve every one of those goals that I've got in place for myself. I've really not gone too far reaching. I think they're all incredibly achievable and I think that's what it needs to be. They need to be really motivating. They need to be short term. The next couple of months, there's something there for you to tick off the list. And I really do think that everything that I've put in place here will make for a successful 2021 year. Hopefully you can use that process and that principle to create your own goals and do leave it in the comments as well. What goals do you have in place for 2021? What have you thought about? And uh, and what's your biggest goal? Put it in the comments and, and let everybody know because that really does lead into this next tip that I've got for you guys, which is how to stick to your goals. And the first way that I like to try and stick to my goals whenever I put them out in the world is I do try to put them out to the world. I speak to people about my goals. I don't keep them bottled up. I love to put out these videos here on YouTube and tell you about all of them. It keeps me accountable. You know what I'm trying to do. Everyone else knows what I'm trying to do. And therefore, I just sort of work harder and, and be more motivated to going out and achieving them because I'm telling everyone about them. I think it's very easy to sort of hide away, not really tell anyone about it, and then easy to give up on the goal. So that's the way I like to go about it. I do like to tell everyone. I also like to write them down. 
I like to look at them every single day. Keep them in a place that you can see them and they are visible to you. It will keep it front of mind and it will keep you focusing on the goal at hand. Uh, assess how you're going once a month as well. Just check in with yourself. Have, hey, have I, have I got closer to what these five goals are on an annual basis? Um, just keep, a, keep an eye on it because it will keep you motivated to wanting to, uh, to strive towards achieving them. Like I said before, make sure they are realistic. Um, keep them realistic and achievable. Keep them to just three to five so they are maintainable. And also just keep it fun as well. Don't make it too serious. Create a reward uh, for yourself as well um, if you do complete that goal. There's no better feeling when you can comp obviously complete the goal. So obviously put a, uh, a bit of fun in place there and, and come up with, um, I guess, a fun way to celebrate it. So they would be my, my tips, my five tips on how to, uh, to stick to your goals once you finally put them in place and put all the time and the effort into it. Um, and hopefully you can achieve every single one of them that you set for yourself in 2021. It's been a really tough year this year, no doubt about it, but I really do have a lot of optimism towards next year. I'm really excited to see how you all go with your goals. Obviously, let me know in the comments what they are. And uh, hopefully you've got some inspiration out of this episode. That's what it was today. It was a bit of inspiration to say, yep, you're right. I do need to set some goals and get focused on next year. Forget about this year. Let's make 2021 great. And it starts right now by creating some awesome goals to go and kick butt. So that'll do it for me today, guys. Um, really, really do appreciate you tuning in. If you are still here, give the video a thumbs up uh, if you've got any value out of it. And if you want more reselling content, hit the subscribe button because I am putting out those three videos every single week. Very much appreciated, guys. Thanks for hanging around. I look forward to catching you in the next one. Trip to the Thrift on Thursday. Really looking forward to it. We'll see you then.